Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how we can make a very simple game over screen where you can quit the game, restart the level, go back to the main menu and even any other functions you would want. If you have a tutorial you want to see, request it in the form in the description. Now let's get started. Now in the scene, as you can see, I have a player which has a player movement script, a rigid body, a box collider, an animator and a player health script a background image, a main camera, a ground platform, an object that will damage our player, a canvas for the UI of the health bar, and an event system that is paired with the canvas. If you want to get a player health system alongside the health bar and a script that will damage the player on collision, I have a tutorial for that that you can find on the channel. It may be beneficial to watch that first if you haven't got that stuff set up, and then come back here for your game over screen. So right now, if we press play, you can see I can walk around, walk into this object, and in the top left, I take some damage. I can do this a few times, and you can see when we die, nothing actually happens. Now I could add a line of code like we did in the player health script where our player is just destroyed, but after that, nothing actually happens. I just have a debug log that tells us that our player is dead. So what we wanna do is create some UI buttons that are enabled when our player's health is set to zero or below. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. What you can do is right click in our hierarchy, go to UI, and then you can press panel. What this will do is create a new UI with a panel, which is essentially a flat plane that we can adjust. And it is just an image of a flat color. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that my panel has automatically become a child of my current canvas. That's because Unity prefers having one canvas and storing any UI elements inside this one canvas. And that is what we're also gonna be doing. If you don't already have a canvas like I already do, don't worry as creating a panel will automatically create a canvas as a parent game object. As a panel is a UI element, it has to be attached to a canvas. So with this panel image, I'm just gonna make this black and then we can change the opacity down here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger by holding alt on one of the blue circles and just dragging out. And you can see on our game screen, we had a little white line there. That is no longer there. Now with this panel, I'm just gonna rename this to game over screen. And this is the game object that we're gonna be enabling and disabling because we're gonna store all of our UI buttons in this game object. So now from this game over screen, make sure it's selected and go to UI button. And now you can see we have this button paired to our game over screen. One thing that is important to note on your canvas, if you haven't already, make sure to set your UI scale mode to scale with screen size. It will do exactly as it says. And if you have a different screen sizes, your UI elements will scale just a little bit better than if it was on constant pixel size. And you wanna do this kind of early on before you start changing a bunch of UI elements, as it can be a pain, trust me, I know. Going back to our button, we can just rename this to restart button. So now with this new UI button, what I'm actually gonna do is use a custom font. I'm gonna be using a Minecraft type font, which I've just dragged in from a folder. I'll leave a link in the description for a font website where you can very easily download a font and drag it into your project. And what I'm gonna do, you can see I've got this Minecraft font here. I'm gonna drag it onto our text item. And you can see on our game screen, our text is a little bit blurry. And there's a few things we can do to adjust that. So on our Minecraft font object, I'm gonna set the font size to something like 300, something really high. And then I'm gonna change the character to Unicode. If we hit apply, you can see very quickly the UI sharpens up. And now on this text object, we can increase the font size. We can adjust it however we want. If for whatever reason your text is slightly off, you can see that we're a little bit too high. You can make sure your alignment is set to the middle on both of these. And then you can also select align by geometry. That can sometimes fix your issue. But sometimes this is just a case of trial and error. Some fonts are different than others. But in regards to this font, this is what looks good for mine. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to our text object. I'm gonna rename this text to restart, just like that. I'm then gonna set the font of our text to white. And as you can see, we now can't see it. I'm gonna go back to our restart button. I'm gonna set the color of our button to black. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity of it way down to something like this. And then you can see in our game screen, we have this little button here. And now we can just do some adjustments to resize it a little bit. So I'm gonna press R to scale and just make it a little bit bigger to something like this. And they're gonna drag it upwards so we make space for our other buttons. I'm also gonna select our button, press T and then grab one side and hold Alt. And then I can just slowly drag this in just a little bit. And then finally, we can make it just a little bit bigger. And you can see we have our first button. But now if we press play, when we hover over our button, we're not seeing any visual response that our mouse is over our button when we select it or anything. And that's because we need to adjust these settings right here. Right here, you can see we have a number of different colors that we can change depending on the condition of our button. We've got normal, highlighted, pressed, selected, and disabled. So the first thing we need to do is match the color of these to the color of our normal sprite here. So I'm gonna change all of these to black. And what I essentially want to do is change the opacity of this black depending on the state. So in regards to our normal color, we can just have it similar to something here. So around here should be fine. For our highlighted color, so when we're just hovering over the button, we want to have it a little bit higher, something like this. When we press down on the button is when we want it to be at its darkest. So we can put it to something like this. And then for when it's selected, we can have it just a little bit lower than pressed, but higher than normal and highlighted. And that should be fine just like that. 
So now if we press play, you can see that in a normal state, our button is one color. When we hover over it, it gets a little bit darker. When we click on it, it gets darker than that. And then when we let go, it's currently selected. So it's just a little bit darker than before. But I can click outwards of the button and the button no longer becomes a selected button. So it goes back to its normal state. If you wanted to disable having the button selected, you can change your navigation from automatic to none. And now if we try this again, you can see we can hover over the button, select it again, but it doesn't become a selected button. So now that we have a restart button, that is now at a point where we can hover over it and select it and we get a visual response. We can now copy this button by selecting the button itself and going Control C, Control V. We can then call this menu button. I can drag this down a little bit and then I can open this up and change our text to main menu. And you can see there's a little bit of a tight squeeze on the edges there. So I can go back to our menu button, press T, click down on one side and hold Alt and we can drag this out a little bit. I can then copy and paste this button one last time and this button we can call quit button and this button let's just drag down again open it up click on the text and just type in quit and then we can go back to our quit button press t click down and hold alt and just shorten this down a little bit like that now we can play this and you can see we have our three buttons they are all selectable and now you can see we officially have a little game over screen. But at the moment, we do not have any code or functionality for these buttons to take us anywhere. So that's what we're going to do next. So for now, what we can do is just disable this game over screen. And now I'm going to create a game manager script where we can store the functionality for disabling and enabling these UI elements. So I'm going to right click on our hierarchy and just create an empty and call this game manager. Let's go on to add components and create a game manager script. Now in this script, I'm going to create a public game object and call this game over UI. Underneath our update, I'm going to create a new function, public void game over. In this function, I'm going to enable our game over UI. So game over UI dot set active true. And now with this function, what I'm going to do is head over to our player health script, which simply once our health is set to zero, we get a debug log in the console saying dead. Again, if you want these scripts, watch my video on player health first. This is the script that takes away from that health. So now in our player health script, let's create a public game manager script object and just call this game manager. And now in our if statement where we check if health is at zero, we can just do a game manager. Then we can call the function that is inside our game manager script, which is called game over. So game manager dot game over. So now there's one more thing we need to do to ensure this function doesn't continue to play over and over. We want it to only call this function once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private true or false statement. So a private ball and call this is dead. And then inside this if health statement, I'm just going to check if health is equal to zero and our player isn't dead. So to check to see if this is false, we're going to put an exclamation mark at the start of it. So we're saying if our health is zero and the player is not dead, let's instantly set is dead to true and then we can call our game over function this means our game over function will only be called once which is going to save us some trouble later in the video back in the editor let's go to our game manager and you can see we've got a reference to our game over ui so let's open up the canvas and drag this game over screen game object into this slot and then on our player health script we've got a reference to a game manager and let's just drag in our game manager here now we can press play and we can walk into this a few times and when we finally die you can see we have this ui come up one thing I do want to do here is I've decided I don't like this font in this context. So it's a perfect opportunity for me to show you how quickly we can change the font of these text items. So I'm going to select all three of our text images and I've imported a new font here directly from the fonts of my Windows PC. This is Berlin Sands and I'm just going to drag this in right here. I can set the font size to something like 24 and you can see just like that it is very quickly changed. Remember to go into the font settings if you do change font and adjust the settings of that font in the same way we did for the font at the start of the video. Now again I can just adjust my restart button just a little bit by pressing down on one side and holding alt and for me that looks much better and that is how quickly you can change these text objects. But when we do die you can see at the moment there is still a few issues for example we can obviously move around and also these buttons don't actually do anything. So let's head back into our game manager script and let's create some button functionality. So the way buttons work in Unity, we create public functions from scripts and then we can reference this script directly on the button and take the function from that script. So what I'm going to do is do public void restart. So what I'm going to do is create a new namespace at the top. We're going to use using unity engine dot scene management. And then inside this function, let's just do scene manager. So let's access our scene manager dot load scene. So now load scene is looking for an integer. So what we're going to do is scene manager dot get active scene. So now we've got the current active scene and we need to get the build index of this scene. So we can do dot build index. So back in our editor, let's go to our canvas, open up our restart button here. Then on our button component, let's go to this on click area here and press the plus sign. And then we have an object reference here. 
Let's drag in our game manager. Go to function, game manager script, and then you can see we have a function for restart alongside a bunch of others, but the one we're gonna use is restart. And now you can see if we press play, I can take damage a bunch of times and then on death, we have these buttons and main menu and quit will not work, but if I press restart, you can see our scene reloads. So that is one way you can restart your scene. So now the next button that we're gonna do is our main menu, is our main menu button. So let's do public void main menu. And again, we can just load a scene here. So we can do scene manager dot load scene. And then for this one, I'm gonna pass in a scene name. So for now we can just do main menu. And now back in our editor, we can just create a temporary scene. So create scene, and we can call this exactly how we called it in our script, main menu. Now in the script, all I'm gonna do, this is purely for testing purposes, I'm gonna create some very simple UI that just says main menu. This is the simple scene that we're gonna use. And because it has the exact same scene name, it should be absolutely fine when we test this out. So let's go to our menu button, scroll down to the button component, and on our on click, let's press plus, add our game manager, and then under functions, go to game manager script. Now we have a main menu function. So one thing that is important to note is that it will not be able to load the scene currently because we need to add the scene to our build index. So how you do that is let's go to file, build settings, and then you can see we have all the scenes that we would have if we was to build this game into an actual game, an actual .exe file. This scene would be the only scene that is used. And we can get rid of this because this is just from a package. But what we want to do is add open scenes, which is our current scene. And then also we can drag in our main menu scene that we just made or whatever your main menu scene is. That's all we need to do. We can close this down now and press play. And now if we press main menu, you can see we load into our main menu screen. Now, finally, I'm going to do our quit button, which will close our application. And that is very simple. We can just do public void quit. And there's a very simple line of code that we can use for this. And it's simply application dot quit, open and close bracket, and then a semicolon. Now, one thing that is important to note about this is that in the editor, this will not work. as because when we're testing it in the editor, it's not a dot exe file. It's simply a test version in our editor, of course. So that is one thing to keep in mind if you think the game is not working. If you did want to test it, you could go to file, build and run. But what we're going to do is go to our quit button now and finally press on click, add our game manager, go to our functions, game manager script, and then press quit. One thing we could do to test that all three of these buttons are working is just add a debug log in all three of them. So in our restart, we could just do debug.log restart. In our main menu, just do debug.log main menu. And then for our quit, we can do debug.log quit. And now you can see if I press the quit button, you can see we got a little quit debug in the bottom left there. Same for when we press the restart button and also for our main menu. So now we have the main functionality in place, it's time to do a few extra things that can make our game over screen feel more polished. So one of those things that you may have already done is disabling the cursor and then enable it when our game over screen is active. And we can do this by going into our script and initially in our start function, setting our cursor.visible equal to false and also locking the cursor to the center of the screen using cursor.lockState equals cursorlockmode.locked. And then what we can do is in our update function, we can check if our game over UI dot active in hierarchy. So if our UI is active at any point in the game, we can then copy this code here, paste this into here and then change this to true and set our cursor lock mode to none. And then we can do an else statement, paste this again, but then set it to false and lock the cursor. So if our game over UI is active, then enable our cursor. And if it is disabled, so we are playing the game and we are still alive, then we will lock our cursor. And you can see right now, you cannot see my cursor as it has been locked. But when we die, you can see our cursor becomes enabled. I could then restart and you can see our cursor disappears and it's locked again. To make this look a little bit better, in my script, what I'm gonna do is when the player dies, I'm gonna disable my player game object. So I'm gonna do game object dot set active and then false. And now after I die, our player is disabled and our game over screen has been enabled. And we can then choose to either quit the game, go to our main menu or restart the game. But guys, hopefully this is everything you need to get started on a very simple game over screen. Again, if you wanted to see me go more in depth about any of the topics in this video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more or want some other added benefits to the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon in the description down below. If you have a tutorial you want to see, make sure to request it in the form below. But apart from that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I will thank you all very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.